Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today, we're gonna upgrade a device to iOS 15. I'm gonna show you my process for making sure that everything is backed up and safe before I go through the process of running an update. Now, I am using a newer iPhone. This is the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I'm gonna upgrade this one. It currently has the last version of iOS on it, and we're gonna upgrade it to iOS 15. So there are some apps that I'm going to talk about that we're going to use and some different processes that just assure that everything is backed up. Apple has done a really good job at making it easy to upgrade to the next level of software and also just upgrading between different devices. So utilizing iCloud, we can make sure that our, uh, our all of our stuff is backed up. Utilizing other apps, maybe because we have a lot of phone Photos. We don't want to pay for a large iCloud account. Uh, there are other ways to back things up and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I recommend is just getting your phone plugged into power. Your phone is going to require at least 50% power and be plugged into a device, a charging device in order to completely run the update. So upgrading is very simple. It's really as simple as just going into settings, general, software update, and then it will show us what updates are available. Now, it will show you maybe 14.8 if that update is available, which that means there is a version 14 update available. And then down below, it shows that there is a upgrade to iOS 15. And we're gonna bypass the 14.8 and go straight to iOS 15. But before you do that, there are some things that you need to check. We're gonna go back here to our uh, settings homepage and we're gonna tap on our iCloud account and go to iCloud. And you can see here, it's showing my iCloud storage and it's showing apps using iCloud. And I would wanna make sure that all of these are toggled or as many of these are toggled as possible because this is going to uh, assure that your data is being backed up to iCloud. Now you can see here that I have two terabytes of iCloud storage. If you don't have a paid account with iCloud, you're gonna have less storage than this. And if your storage is relatively full, you might not be able to back up your entire phone to iCloud, which means that all of your items are not being backed up. So you can see that I do have photos being backed up to iCloud and I have that turned on. I have iCloud Photos enabled. I have optimized iPhone storage, which means that if my iPhone is running low on storage, that it will uh, make sure that those images are backed up to iCloud and it will remove the full version and just leave a low resolution version on my phone until I actually need those photos. I can also choose download and keep originals, which means that everything that's on my iCloud is gonna be downloaded to my phone. This is really only a good option if you have a lot of phone storage. Uh, so I recommend the optimize option. And then I can upload to my photo stream, which uploads the last 30 days of new photos to view on other devices. For example, if you have an Apple TV or an iPad or something like that. Uh, and then uh, allowing you to create shared albums. So, I mean, those, those features there are important. I think that for most of us, the backup of our photos and videos are probably the most important thing on our devices. Most other things like email and stuff like that are being backed up, but you can check here just to make sure that all of these items are enabled so that you have backups. Other important ones might be messages, making sure that all of your text messages, anything that's taken place in iMessage is being backed up and uh, that would be an important one as well. So toggle these uh, as you find them important. If you are running low on space and, and you don't have a whole lot of iCloud storage available, you can toggle some of these off. Keep in mind though that Photos is probably going to be the biggest contributor to the amount of storage that's being used. And I can even go in Manage Storage and I can see exactly what is using how much storage and I can clear some of those things out. So you can see here that the majority of my storage is used for backups right now, which means the different devices that I have backing up to iCloud are using the most amount of storage. 
and 37.7 gigs, which is quite a lot still, is for photos and messages. And I can actually go through and see what is utilizing a lot of storage within my iCloud. Um, and I can delete that. So keep in mind that some of this is shared. The Minecraft Apple TV edition is my kids. It's not me. And so if I deleted that, they would lose everything that's stored in iCloud. So you definitely want to be careful what you are uh, what you're clicking on and what you decide to delete if you are looking to remove a little bit of uh, things from iCloud to free up a little bit more space. So definitely look in iCloud and make sure that those items are enabled. Another thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you have a recent backup of your phone ran and that is here under iCloud Backup. Now iCloud Backup, if it's enabled, is going to run usually at night when your phone is plugged into a charger or something like that. And so you want to just do a most recent backup. I'm just going to run a backup right now just to make sure that it is as accurate an update as possible. If, I, if my last backup was last night and I decide to run an update and I have to restart my phone or you know reinstall the OS because something happened, then I'm not gonna have anything that happened today. I may have taken some pictures this morning. I may have sent a few text messages. And if I don't run a backup right now before I run my software update, then I run the risk of losing a little bit of data. So it's very important to run this backup and it usually takes, as long as they're, as long as they're running daily, it usually doesn't take that long to run these backups. But if you haven't run this backup before, it could take quite a while. And so you wanna make sure that you're connected to power. You wanna make sure that you also uh, are connected to Wi-Fi because typically this is not going to work over a data connection. So you'll want to wait until this process is complete. It will show you the date and time of the last update so that you know that your device has been backed up. Uh, and backup is what I mean. It'll show you the date and time of the most recent backup so that way you know that your backup is up to date. So what if you are a little shy on iCloud storage and you want to back up everything, make sure that your photos and videos are backed up? Well, there are two different options that I use. One is Google Photos. Google Photos now um, is, is no longer completely free. It used to be free for high resolution images. It would back up everything, including your videos, and you'd have tons of space available. Now they charge a little bit for it, but it's not really that bad. Of course, iCloud isn't really that expensive either. Uh, when you think about it, um, like two terabytes of storage for me, I think is like, $10 a month or $7.99 a month or something like that. And that's more than enough storage for me. I do have uh, a terabyte, I believe, of data of storage with Google. And so I back up my device also to Google because sometimes I'm using Android phones as well. And so it's nice just to have all of my stuff uploading to one place. So Google Photos is a good option. And one of the things that you can do with Google Photos just to make sure that everything is backed up once you're logged in is choose this free up space option. Now, because I've already done this on this phone, it said that there's, no, there's nothing on it to free up, but essentially what that feature does is it goes through all the photos and videos on your phone, make sure that they have already been uploaded and backed up to, uh, to Google Photos, and it even gives you an option to delete them from your phone afterwards, which is a free up space option for, for those of you that have ran out of room on your phone and need more room so you can take additional photos and videos. Google Photos is great. Um, I really like it's all of its smart features, uh, how it automatically puts people in albums and all of this stuff and sends me fun memories that I can look back on. Um, Google Photos has been really good um, and it, it is free-ish. Uh, you can utilize a little bit of the space that you get free when you create an account. And then if you have a lot of photos, then you will need to pay for an account. But like I said, it's not terribly expensive. Um, Google Photos, along with pretty much most 
tools out there that provide free backup for a while are eventually going to take that away and ask us to pay a little bit. Um, you know, they get us hooked on the free and then they ask us to pay a little bit. Um, Dropbox is another option. Uh, if you've used Dropbox before, Dropbox typically is file storage, most people think, or file sharing. Dropbox also uh, is, has a free option. You can get a bit of space for free. You can use that space to back up the photos on your iPhone. When you open up, you can see it's even asking me, back up your photos instantly. I can turn that on. Or if I've logged into Dropbox and I don't see that option, I can tap on photos and I can check to see if camera uploads is off. Right now it is off, so all I have to do is tap, click allow access to photos, and then hit save selection. And then I can choose all photos, I can have it include videos, I can tell it whether or not to use cell data to back up. And then I can have it save the HEIC photos as JPEGs or just leave them as HEIC images. Now, the HEIC image is that image format that Apple is using to make images still look good but have smaller file sizes and be a bit more optimized. But not all computers and platforms can use them. So I like the fact that the Dropbox app will convert those. And so now I'll just tap turn on and anytime that I take a photo uh, or any photos that I had in existence on my phone are gonna be backed up to, uh, to Dropbox. And I can install Dropbox on my computer and access all of my photos that are in Dropbox on my computer uh, or on an iPad or any other device for that matter. So I've given you a couple of ways that you can back up your photos and videos. Like I said, I think those are some of the most important things that we have. Um, we've checked iCloud to make sure that our app data, our messages and stuff like that are being backed up. And I've given you some tips on how to minimize the amount of stuff that's going into iCloud if you have a smaller iCloud account. So now we're ready to run our software update. As I mentioned before, the software updates are relatively safe, but it is good to make sure that we go through and, and assure that everything is backed up. It's a good opportunity to do that. So I'm gonna go to settings and we're gonna go down to general. We're gonna tap on software update and we're gonna tap update to iOS. And right now iOS 15.0.2 is current, but your device should show you whatever version is the latest version uh, based on when you're watching this video. So it's gonna ask me to review the terms and conditions, which I'll agree to, and then it's gonna go through the process here of uh, downloading the update, and then when the update is downloaded, I can go ahead and install it. It'll go through the startup process. And so I'm not gonna make you sit here through this. We're gonna fast forward. We'll jump to the next step. All right, it looks like our update is complete. You can see here that I have a message that my phone has been updated, and then it gives me any other messages. I don't have a SIM card in this phone right now, and it's asking me to set up my Face ID and Apple Pay because I hadn't set that up pre previously on this particular device. So now I can unlock the device, and you can see that my software has been updated. I can go through and finish updating any settings that it needs, and I could just double check by going to software update here, and you can see that my phone has been updated. So you'll definitely want to just make sure that all of your iCloud settings are still enabled. There are new ones now. As you can see, we've got the private relay, hide my email, stuff like that. And so some of these settings, you're just going to want to make sure that they're still enabled uh, for moving forward so that your phone continues to be backed up and it's safe. If this is the first time that you've ever gone through these iCloud settings and enabled them, you want to make sure that they're on because you want these backups to be running nightly or whenever your phone is plugged into the charger and the screen is turned off. If it's been 24 hours or whatever, your phone should be backing itself up to iCloud, which is going to make sure that your device is safe and all of your data is, of course, safe. So if anything happens to your phone, whether it gets damaged, lost, stolen, broken, whatever, your data is going to be backed up. And when you get a new phone and 
log into your iTunes account or your iCloud account, it's going to update with all of the information that you had on your previous device. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found it interesting. Uh, of course, updating is relatively simple, but making sure that your data is safe and secure is very important. And we just wanted to go through that together here in this video. So let me know what you think. If you have any questions, the comment section below is great for that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel here. I've got some new videos coming up with a comparison between the iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro cameras, uh, and also some other videos on some cases and stuff like that as well that uh, seem to be pretty popular on my channel. So subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those. I hope to see you back soon in another video. Take care.